Hello everyone, costume teacher here, and I'm here today to read to you chapter eight of The World According to Humphrey. All right, there's a few words and phrases that I want to make sure you are familiar with in this chapter before we start reading. So, the first one is suffocate. Can everyone say suffocate? <laughs> that means to have difficulty breathing. Like this picture, if you had an elephant on your tummy, you might feel like you are going to suffocate. <laughs> okay, then the phrase, you are a riot. Can everyone say that? You are a riot. That means if you say that to someone, you are funny, which is kind of interesting because riot can have a few different meanings. And in this case, it means doing something funny. <laughs> All right, another phrase is to, when someone has livened things up. Can you say livened things up? Okay, livened things up means to make something more exciting. <laughs> Look at all those excited people. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you are following along with a copy of the book, chapter eight starts on page 57. And if you are just listening to me, this little hamster, then just enjoy. All right, so with that said, let's get started with chapter eight. I love how we're learning interesting things about various people in the school and how everybody kind of has a backstory and something that maybe not everybody knows because that's how real life is. We don't know what's going on with everybody all of the time. Even though we spend a lot of time at school together, you might not know all the details about everyone. And it's fun when you start to learn more about the people around you. So let's get started. Chapter eight, tricks and treats. Halloween or Halloween or Halloween. Hmm. I wasn't sure what it was but I was pretty sure I didn't like it. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> Especially on Monday night after Mrs. Brisbane turned out the lights. That's when those skeletons on the wall took on an eerie glow. The bats hanging from the ceiling began to whirl and twirl. And the smile on that ghastly orange pumpkin face looked more like a wicked smirk. Weird, weird, weird. So I was thrilled when Aldo flicked on the lights. Whoa, it looks like Halloween in here, he exclaimed as he wheeled in his cleaning cart. He strolled over to my cage as usual and bent down so we were face to face. <laughs> so, are you gonna wear a costume for Halloween? It's Wednesday, you know. Halloween is when ghosts and goblins come out to play, he explained. <laughs> Eek! I squeaked. No, no, it's not scary. It's just fun. All the kids will wear costumes, Richie's gonna be a werewolf. So what are you gonna wear? A fur coat? <laughs> he laughed at his own joke. <laughs> Can everyone give a <laughs> And then began his cleaning routine, talking to me as he swept and dusted. I started the 
thinking about this costume thing. Hmm, Miss Mac had a costume party once while I was staying with her. People dressed up like kings and pirates and ghosts, and Miss Mac dressed up like a clown with a sparkly pink wig and a funny face. Ooh, <laughs> great. Nobody wore a fur coat. I thought about this costume thing all night and the next day. Hmm, when Garth threw a piece of wadded up paper in my cage, I wondered about the costumes. What's with this Garth kid? Am I right? Hmm. Note to self. <laughs> when AJ tripped on his way up to the chalkboard and Gail didn't giggle, I wondered about the costumes. Even when Mrs. Brisbane called on Saya and she answered her, I wondered hmm, about the costumes. And I came up with a plan hmm, of my own. On Wednesday, Halloween arrived, but there were no costumes. I was extremely disappointed until Heidi blurted out, Mrs. Brisbane, when are we going to have the party? Hmm, raise your hand, Heidi, the teacher told her. Heidi obediently raised her hand and Mrs. Brisbane called on her. This time, when Heidi asked her question, Mrs. Brisbane said, we will have our lessons this morning. After lunch, you may put on your costumes and we'll start the party. <gasps> I felt happy, happy, happy. I got in a nice nap for the rest of the morning. But I was wide awake after lunch. My classmates returned from the cafeteria, then scurried off to the cloakroom and the bathrooms and returned. But I hardly recognized them in their costumes. Oh, they were wonderful. A dragon, two pirates, a princess, a ninja, two clowns, a ballerina, a bunny, a cat, thank goodness, not a real one, <laughs> a baseball player, a mad scientist, a skeleton, the Statue of Liberty, an angel, and a devil. The room mothers came to help out with the party. They were both dressed as witches. Still, Mrs. Brisbane was the scariest of them all. She didn't wear a costume, just a button that had the words, this is my costume printed on it. Nice. <laughs> she gathered everyone in a circle, pushing all the tables back. Then she announced that the class would be having some treats. Woohoo! Treats. <laughs> but in order uh, to get them, they each had to do a trick, either tell a joke, sing a song, or perform a trick for the rest of the class. Hmm. Oh, I wish someone had told me. I had figured out the costume part, but what about this tricking for treats? Art, the ninja, stood on his head. He stood on his head so long, Mrs. Brisbane finally had to thank him and tell him it was someone else's turn. <laughs> Gail, the ballerina, twirled around the room on her toes. Garth, the baseball player, told a joke about a witch. Miranda, the bunny, sang a funny song about your ears hanging low. Oh, I mean, we remember that one, right? <laughs> Fellow Girl Scouts, am I right? <laughs> it was all very entertaining, except for the fact that I was thinking about something else. Hmm. But Mrs. Brisbane got my full attention when she called on Saya. Saya was dressed as the Statue of Liberty. She wore a flowing dress that had a, and had a crown on her head and a big cardboard torch in one hand. 
she stared down at the floor as she took her place in the center of the circle. What trick will you do for us, Saya? The teacher asked. Saya still stared at the floor. Sing your song, Saya! Sing! I squeaked out as loudly as I could. You can do it, Saya! Sing! Yes, I know all she could hear was squeak, 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 but I did my best. I think Humphrey, wa Humphrey wants to hear from you, said Mrs. Brisbane in a surprisingly friendly voice. Suddenly, without warning, Saya began to sing the Star Spangled Banner in her clear, sweet voice. Everyone stood up right away, like you're supposed to when they sing the national anthem. Mrs. Brisbane put her hand over her heart, and the other kids did too. Well, pay attention, Art didn't until his mom came over and whispered in his ear. I stood up too, as proud as a hamster could possibly be. When it was over, no one clapped or said a word. It seemed as if those sweet notes were still drifting around the room. That was lovely, Saya. Thank you for sharing your beautiful voice with us, Mrs. Brisbane said. I wish she'd speak to me someday. Nice, encouraging, friendly. Anyway, the tricks continued. And after AJ told a few riddles, Mrs. Brisbane looked around the circle and said, did I miss anyone? That was the moment I'd been waiting for. No one had noticed, but the night before, I had sneaked one of Aldo's white dusting cloths into my sleeping hut. I had to act quickly. I pulled out the cloth and crawled under so it completely covered me. Then I stood up and began to shout like I had never shouted before. Trick or squeak! I he cried. Trick or squeak! <laughs> Miranda noticed first. Look, she yelled. It's Humphrey! I wish I could have seen the faces of my classmates, but it was dark, dark, dark under the cloth. I could hear them though. First there were gasps, then giggles, then shouts of, look, and Humphrey's a ghost. I continued to squeak my heart out until I heard Mrs. Brisbane's firm footsteps coming toward my cage. Who did this? She asked. Who put that on Humphrey? Mm. No one answered, of course. Not even me. He could suffocate under that, she said. <laughs> But he looks so cute, Heidi called out. Mrs. Brisbane didn't even answer. She just said, will someone please uncover him? Golden Miranda hmm, opened the cage and whisked the cloth away. That means she took it off very fast. Humphrey, you are a riot, she said. Only a riot? Let's be honest here. I was a smash hit. Then the room mother served up cupcakes with orange icing and cups of apple juice, and my classmates played games. Just before the bell rang, Mrs. Brisbane clapped her hands and made an announcement. Mrs. Hopper and Mrs. Patel and I have consulted with one another. We have decided to give the prize for best trick to Saya Nasiri. Everyone clapped and cheered as Mrs. Brisbane handed Saya a blue ribbon. Saya looked over at me and smiled a beautiful smile. Mrs. Brisbane continued, and we've decided to award the prize for best costume to, drum roll please, Humphrey! <laughs> She walked over to my cage and taped a big blue ribbon to it while my classmates cheered for me. 
<laughs> Thank you, I squeaked, but I'm not sure anyone could hear me over all the noise. Thank you all. <laughs> the bell rang and the room was soon empty, except for Mrs. Brisbane. As she gathered up her papers to take home, because let's be honest, these teachers are taking home some work. Right, teachers? It never stops. Note, children, be nice to your teachers. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. As she, Mr. Morales came in. He was dressed in a cap and gown like people wear when they are graduating. Happy Halloween, Sue. Did you have a good party? He asked. Very, she answered. Somehow, your friend over there got a hold of a ghost costume and won the prize. See, I told you he'd add a lot to your classroom, he said with a smile. He has livened things up, said Mrs. Brisbane. Oh, joy, joy, joy! I believe she was starting to like me. Just so he doesn't liven things up too much, she added. Hmm. Poof. My hopes of winning over Mrs. Brisbane's heart crashed oh, to the ground. <laughs> Mr. Morales said his kids kept asking about me and then he quickly left. Mrs. Brisbane headed out the door after him. There I was all alone in room 26 with a bunch of half-torn bats and scattered skeletons hanging around me. As I waited for Aldo to arrive, I sat in the darkening room and pondered my job as the classroom pet. Hmm. Had I really accomplished anything? Mr. Morales's children seemed to settle down when I was there. Saya's mother began to learn English and Saya would probably never have sung in front of the class without my encouragement. Still, Mrs. Brisbane was not won over. Neither was Garth Tugwell, although it seemed as if he had liked me well enough in the beginning. Now he always muttered things at me <laughs> as he passed by my cage. I noticed that he was the only one in class who didn't cheer when I won for best costume. I was still worrying about Garth when the lights temporarily blinded me as Aldo sailed into the classroom yelling, trick or treat. <laughs> he was wearing his usual work shirt, uh, dark pants and heavy shoes but on his face, he wore huge glasses with a bulbous nose attached. The center of the glasses had giant eyeballs painted on with circles of red veins. Oh, this sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> his floppy mustache drooped out from under the nose. Great costume, I squeaked. Hey, what's this? Aldo rushed forward to examine my blue ribbon. Best costume for a fur coat? <laughs> I'll have to ask Richie about that, he said. Aldo reached into his lunchbox and pulled out a juicy slice of apple. I've got a special Halloween treat for you, Humphrey, cause I'm very, very happy tonight, he said. I grabbed the apple, 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 <laughs> take two, all right, apple, <laughs> and began nibbling as Aldo pulled his chair up close to my cage. Can you all grab the apple from him? Whoop. <laughs> you see, I went to the Moonlighters Club. Uh-oh, remember that from a couple chapters ago? Remember the club in that ad I found on the projector? I squeaked in excited, yes! <laughs> and excited. 
and I met a real nice girl there named Maria. She works all night at the bakery. So tomorrow we're going out on a date. Ooh, a date. <laughs> Lunch and a movie. Aldo leaned back in his chair. See kids, a date is something that you can start thinking about when you're about 30. Not right now. Got it. <laughs> She's a real nice girl. Pretty. Nice. Did I tell you she works in a bakery? Aldo rose and paced back and forth in front of my cage. You know what I can't figure? I can't figure out how that ad got on that projector. Hmm. Mrs. Brisbane wouldn't show that to the class and she wouldn't be interested herself. And it was weird how the projector was left on. Hmm. Mrs. Brisbane always leaves her room in ship shape condition. That means like perfectly clean. He paused to rub his chin. Can you all rub your chin a little bit? Hmm. Then looked at me out of the corner of his eye. You know, if you weren't locked up in a cage, I think you'd had something to do with it, he said. Then he laughed. <laughs> well, whoever it was, I owe them a big thank you. You're welcome, I squeaked. Too bad Aldo didn't understand me this time. Tip number eight. Hamsters are most active during the evening. <laughs> From Guide to the Care and Feeding of Hamsters by Dr. Harvey H. Hammer. <laughs> well, Humphrey sure is making things happen for people throughout the building, isn't he? Now, my school, which happens to be the best school, has a real Humphrey. So my question for you, whether you're at my school, the best school, or if you're at another school, hmm, if Humphrey was in your classroom and could listen to you, what problem would he be helping you with? Would it be meeting people, talking to people, helping others, helping others listen to you, what would it be? Hmm, let me think about if Humphrey could help me, what would he help me with? Hmm, <laughs> let's all think about that and talk to each other later. All right, I hope you enjoyed chapter eight and I look forward to seeing you again soon to listen to chapter nine. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you soon. Bye.